Folks, what's up? This is Michael on the Graveyard Shift in the wee hours of the dead of night with a brand new trivia question. Yet once again to get your day started. Happy Tuesday. It's terrific Tuesday. And I hope your week is going well. Looks like the hot and sticky weather is coming back to stay for the rest of the week. We had a little reprieve. It was in the 80s. It was raining. It was cooling things off. But that is all said and done. Anywho, the answer to the previous trivia question was the phrase, In God We Trust. Now, on July 10th of 1955, President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed into law H.R. 619, which was the focus of the trivia question, a bill that required the inscription, In God We Trust, to appear on all paper and coin currency. This was the brainchild of a World War II veteran named Charles Bennett who is from Florida, and he served 22 terms in the House of Representatives. There's a picture of him right there, and he originally introduced the resolution. The measure sailed through both houses of Congress with little opposition very quickly and soon became the law of the land, and it still is on the books today. Adding in God we trust to currency, Bennett believed, would, quote, serve as a constant reminder that the nation's political and economic fortunes were tied to its spiritual Faith. And he combined this belief with the Red Scare in the Cold War era of the time. Uh, he he uh, justified that with uh, some of those mindsets and ideologies as well. Now, the inscription actually had its origins in and uh, in and around the Civil War, going back all the way back to the Civil War, due in large part to the efforts of then Treasury Secretary Salmon Chase, who you might remember from your high school history class. Now, a little less than a year later, on March 22nd of 1956, H.R. Resolution 396 was introduced to establish In God We Trust as the national motto. And that bill as well became law a little later on July 30th. A couple of cool geek factoids. As you can imagine, with something that invokes a spiritual origin, like it, the phrase, In God We Trust, American atheists and others have mounted legal challenges to the constitutionality of the motto, In God We Trust, on currency and coins. Many times in the past, those attempts which assert that the phrase violates the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment have been unsuccessful thus far. And this is as recent as 2019. These, these cases are still going before the Supreme Court. They, of course, don't get the lion's share of things, but these types of cases still go before the Supreme Court. The court has, each and every single time that this particular phrase has come before them as a, as a alleged violation of the First Amendment, the court has asserted that the phrase does not compel citizens to engage in religion. So uh, in November of 2009, I thought this was interesting. President, oh, and I remember when this happened, President Obama mistakenly referred to the national motto as e pluribus unum, which also appears on coins and currency. And that, of course, means out of many, one. And that was one of the one of the things that I threw in there that could have possibly have been uh, an answer to the trivia question. Now, of course, Somebody had to go and make a political issue out of this when this happened. And 41 members of Congress actually sent him a letter when he, when he made this mistake and demanded a correction. <laughs> he was like, hey, you know, I, just, I just simply misspoke and that's all there was to it. So also the name appears in many other places. As we all know, we've seen it on t-shirts. We've seen it on license plates. It's the name of, of one of the albums of my favorite rock bands called Striper. So it's all over the place. But that gives you some origins of where the phrase came from and how it came to be on coins and currency. All right, folks, let's get to this terrific Tuesday with a brand new trivia question for July 12th. I guess we're just stuck in the 50s. That'd be cool. 50s was a good era. On this day in 1957... Dwight D. Eisenhower becomes the first president to ride in this newest advancement in transportation technology for a more efficient means of accomplishing short official trips to and from the White House. Don't go for the obvious, folks. 
think of the year. That's all I'm going to tell you. Have a good day. Have a terrific Tuesday.